In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the strangest pens in my collection, the Noodler's Triple Tail. While there are plenty of reviews for it on YouTube that speak of its generous flow, its spectacular flex, and the fact that, thank God, the plastic it's made from doesn't have a terrible odor, I have not seen any mention of some of its other quite unique properties that make it, in my estimation, an excellent choice for drawing. At first glance, the pen is not dissimilar to the Ahab, a little bit longer, and made of clear and, again, thank God, less smelly plastic. And though the plastic is a little bit clear, it's really nothing special and still gives the pen a relatively cheap feel. The piston type converter is the same as the Ahab, which is fine because it has a large ink capacity, which is great for a pen like this. The only real advance here is the more comfortable hourglass shaped section, as opposed to the weirdly tapering section on the Ahab, and the stubby straight section of the Conrad, which makes you place your fingers uncomfortably over the threads. The triple tail does post, but like the Ahab, very shallowly, which makes the pen ridiculously long and back heavy. Okay, that's quite enough for the ergonomics because it's only when you uncap the pen that things get interesting. Instead of the standard steel flex nib on the Conrad and the Ahab, what we have here is a music nib, a nib with three tines. While this is not the only time Noodlers has come out with a music nib, one also being available on the deposit model, the nib here is significantly narrower in shape. Another difference is that while the feeds on the Ahab and the Conrad are friction fit and simply pull out, the feed in the triple tail sits inside an actual housing unit and needs to be twisted out. This is definitely an advancement since housing units do a better job of preventing the pen from dripping and burping, which can be a problem with both the Ahab and the Conrad. Okay, let's try this pen out. Under no pressure, you'll see that it puts down a line that's pretty close to a medium as opposed to an extra fine or a fine line with the Noodler's Ahab or the Conrad. The wider tipping makes for a smoother writing experience than the Ahab, which is not really saying very much since Noodler's nibs tend to be somewhat scratchy. Now here is where the Triple Tail's uniqueness, uniqueness really starts coming through. Notice that the lines are a little bit rough, a little bit broken. This is unusual in a fountain pen, unless the tines are somewhat misaligned or there's some kind of other fault with the nib. Uh, while this may be a problem for elegant writing, for drawing I think the roughness of the line quality actually adds character and a sense of spontaneity the way an uneven broken line adds a sense of boldness to a drawing done in a, media, in a dry media, say like charcoal. Uh, most music nibs I've drawn with have an italic shaped nib such as this steel uh, music nib by Franklin Christoph which has a much thicker downward stroke as opposed to a horizontal stroke. These types of nibs, to my mind, are not particularly good for drawing since the only way to control the line width is to keep rotating the nib, keep changing the nib angle, which can, which can be kind of tricky when you're drawing. In the case of the triple tail, however, the tip on this nib is rounded, so the line it puts down is exactly the same in the downward stroke as it is in the horizontal stroke. While this nib is a little bit on the stiff side, once you actually start flexing it, you'll see that it puts down a very wide, almost wet noodle-like line, more than two or three times the line width on your Ahab or your Conrad. Now, you do have to be fairly careful about putting too much pressure. In my enthusiasm, a little while ago, I actually bent the nibs a little bit out of alignment, and because it has three tines, it was a little bit tricky to get everything back to straight. Now, other people have commented that this pen writes very wet, and when you examine the feed, you'll find that it has an extra wide ink channel carved into it to accommodate all of that extra flex. Now, an overly wet line can be a problem when drawing, because quite often, when you draw, you're gonna build up layers of hatching to go darker and if the pen writes really wet quite often the ink will start pooling up and forming little blobs at the intersections of your hatching. Uh, now I haven't found the wetness of this pen to be particularly extreme certainly nothing out of the ordinary if you're used to using very flexible pens. Personally I would rather choose a pen that writes a little bit on the wet side but has no railroading issues than one that writes drier but is constantly railroading. So this pen has very decent ergonomics, is relatively affordable at about $55 US, has very decent flex to it with no railroading issues. But look, for that amount of money, there are equally decent options, such as the pens from Fountain Pen Revolution with their absolutely excellent ultra flex steel nibs. 
What then makes this pen truly unique and a terrific choice for artists? It's something that I noticed as soon as I actually started drawing with this pen. Because not only does this pen, uh, not only is this pen sensitive to pressure, the unique geometry of the tip also makes it sensitive to rotation, allowing you to vary the thickness of the line depending on how you hold it. When the pen is held flush to the paper, it will draw with a relatively wide medium line. But if you rotate the pen slightly, the line width narrows out until you start drawing with a line that looks more like a fine or an extra fine. And you can easily maintain that line width so long as you maintain that same angle which makes it very easy to go from a fine line back to a thicker line back to your flex. Thin line to flex back to very thin line. When I looked at the nip under a loop I noticed that the tip is slightly rounded and this is just my guess but I think that when you rotate the pen slightly only two of the tines may contact with the paper which creates a narrower stroke. This ability to change line width by rotating the nib side to side is, as far as I can tell, entirely unique to the triple tail, which makes a really interesting drawing tool with a lot of potential for creating different strokes, different line variation, um, giving your drawing extra character. Uh, this allows this pen to produce what I think is probably the greatest variety of lines of any pen that I've actually worked with. Now, the line quality is not elegant, uh, as I mentioned, even with regular writing where the nib is flush to the paper, the edges of the lines are a little bit on the rougher side. But again, uh, I think for drawing, sometimes a little bit of roughness actually gives your drawing character. Look, in drawing, there is such a thing as too elegant a line, or let's put it this way, a line that is so overly ornamental that it distracts from the strength of the image actually being created. Okay, so let's take this pen for an actual test drive. Uh, let's see how it looks like in practice. And then when I draw, I'm going to talk about how to get the best result out of this, what I think is a really interesting and obviously very, very strange drawing tool. I'm going to demonstrate the working properties of the triple tail by doing a figure drawing. Now, I'm well aware that the majority of people who might watch this video do not use their pens for drawing the figure, or perhaps don't even draw with their pens. But, to my mind, there really is no better test of a pen's drawing performance. Now, of course, I'm being biased because I'm a figure drawing instructor and the figure is my absolutely favorite thing to draw. It's something that never ceases to be challenging, especially in pen and ink. But, there are a number of less subjective reasons for drawing the figure to test a pen. First of all, it requires you to put down a huge variety of lines. Very faint, barely visible lines when sketching, short thin lines, long thick lines, lines go from thick to thin, lines that are put down in quick succession when cross-hatching, lines that are drawn very slowly, etc, etc. Long story short, because figure drawing is so demanding, if a pen performs well while I'm doing it, I'm confident it will perform well in every other drawing task. As you can see, I started my drawing with a very light sketch. The fact that the triple tail, which is supposedly a juicy medium with normal pressure, can do this is simply remarkable. I'm not doing anything special here, just so you know. This line, this light line does not require a very light touch or that I hold the pen at an uncomfortable angle. There's no sweet spot, I just need to turn the pen slightly to the side and actually come to think of it a little bit more vertical and it will work this light. I can only attain this very light sketching line with very few of my pens, and most of them are already extra fine, like the Pilot Custom 74SF. Once I've done the armature, which is basically a simplified version of a skeleton, which controls for scale, gesture, proportion, I can build out my simplified volumes. Those are cylinder cones and blocks, which allow me to analyze what the forms are doing in space. I often do all the sketching work in pencil if the pen I'm using puts down too heavy a line. But I really love it when a pen is this versatile that I can do my initial sketching with it and then do my entire drawing with a single pen. For this reason alone, I think the triple tail is absolutely worth purchasing. This is not a pen that requires extra training to use, like the food nibs, which definitely takes some getting used to and can put your wrist in a very uncomfortable strained position. The adjustments I'm making are really slight and I'm certain that anyone with just a few attempts can master it. As absolutely everyone has mentioned who's done any kind of reviews of the triple tail, when flexed, this pen is quite wet, as most flexible pens are, and care has to be taken not to smear your drawing. As a general rule, it's a good idea to work, if you're right-handed, from the top left of your drawing at a downward diagonal towards the bottom right. I'm not being quite so systematic in this drawing, however, and I'm stabilizing my hand on the fingernail on my pinky finger to prevent smearing. 
By the way, I have this pen currently inked up with one of my favorite Noodler's inks, Noodler's Black. This is the only, only ink I've tried with this pen, and I really can't vouch for the same performance with other inks. While this ink is completely waterproof and bulletproof, which means it reacts with the cellulose on the paper and sets almost instantly, it definitely takes its time to dry, particularly when you put down very thick lines while flexing. Those very wet lines, even when you, when you let them dry thoroughly, have a slight residue that mixes into your washes, which can pre prevent a problem if you're using very delicate watercolor washes. Um, some, I assume, very elderly person once castigated me on one of my videos for knowing nothing about the use of blotting paper. Apparently, back in the day, it was common practice to blot out your excess ink, which eliminates the residue problem. Now, I haven't tried it yet, but it's not really that big a deal, and if you're using watercolor paper, you can quickly wash away that excess residue with water before applying your delicate colors. Okay, finishing up the drawing now, and I should probably also wrap up this review. I hope you found my insights into the triple tail useful. The additional line variation that you get by rotating the nib gives you an entirely new dimension of control, and this unique property, combined with the nib's flexibility, makes this pen a surprisingly versatile drawing tool. And since it costs around $50, I strongly recommend everyone try it. If you like this video, please hit subscribe and I'll keep them coming. This channel was originally started to warehouse tutorials for my drawing students when my classes moved to remote learning. But seeing the positive response from the general public has been very gratifying and has sparked my interest in making more videos on art materials and techniques for everyone, not just my students. If you would like to know more about the Noodler's line of pens or the large variety of steel flex nibs out there, or about flex pens in general, I have a growing number of tutorials for you to peruse on my channel. And once again, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for new videos, leave them below and I will do my absolute best to respond.